Welcome to Save Your Sanity, Help for Toxic Relationships. In this episode, we're going to be talking about emotional exhaustion, that extreme fatigue that you feel. <clears throat> and you're, you've gotten so used to it that you don't think about it too much and you don't think you know what to do about it either. So I'm going to give you some hints about that. So steps to overcoming the emotional fatigue that hijackals cause. It's important to feel powerful in the face of feeling powerless. And that's the plan for this episode, that you will hear some ways to overcome this overwhelm of emotional exhaustion. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I'm thrilled that you're here. If you've found me for the first time, welcome. I'm glad you did. If you're returning, I'm glad you found value and came back. So we'll have a great conversation to, today about these very, very basic things. Because if you have been feeling exhausted, when you think about doing something and you feel exhausted, it's a good indication that we should look for the emotional causes of that as well as the physical. I think we all know what the physical causes of exhaustion are. But we can say something as simple as lack of sleep. And if we don't look well below just lack of sleep, we may not realize that we're living our life walking on eggshells. And as you've heard me say before, that's not a healthy way to get your exercise. But it will cause emotional fatigue because you're always hypervigilant. You're always in a state of pairs of opposites. Push, pull, right, wrong, good, bad, black, white, all, nothing. All the time you are in these places that are extremes and you don't know which they're going to. So you begin to feel like you're in an emotional tennis match. You don't really know where to look and it can be totally exhausting. And what it will turn into for you is what we call hypervigilance. You don't know where it's coming from next, so you're always on the alert. You're always thinking, what's that person going to say? What are they going to do? What did they want? Is what I've done what they want? Are they going to criticize? If I've done everything in my power, are they going to find fault with that? Was it not enough? So you have these things that are going on within you at all times. And the hypervigilance means basically you are always looking over your shoulder. Are they coming? Are they happy? Are they unhappy? Do they have a glower on their face? Is there something that you may have missed? If you did everything, will it be good enough? As I said earlier. So these things become very important. You start second guessing them. Can I count on them to behave, I think, the way they will? And second guessing yourself. Am I even right in thinking about what I did or what I said or what I want? And do I have the right to do that? Because after a while, you start to second guess your place on the planet, don't you? Uh, because they're telling you things that you don't even deserve your place on the planet. Some hijackals will tell you that. And I don't want you ever to believe that. So we want to talk about this very important topic tonight. And you know the hypervigilance comes from the concern you're going to be blamed, and you're blamed for everything. Everything is your fault when you're with a hijackal. Why? Because hijackals can't have any flaws or faults in their perception of themselves, so it must be your fault, right? No, it isn't. Of course it isn't. But that's the dynamic that gets set up. So there's a part of you that's always on edge, and that in itself is exhausting. And then you have to deal with their behaviors or their words. And if you happen to have a hijackal parent, you're already predisposed to feel these ways when you get a hijackal partner. So it becomes even more ingrained and even more deeply exhausting. And you may have a fear in that hypervigilance that you won't be heard, that you won't be considered, that the hijackal doesn't care what you want, doesn't care what you feel, doesn't care what you need. And that can be very, very true. 
So one of the things that's good to start doing is to realize that you're not there to meet the expectations of the hijackal. Now that's travesty. I realize that's travesty on the hijackal human planet because of course you're there to meet their needs. That's what they think. That's what they feel. That's what they want. But in actual fact, you are not. You know, they need to meet their own needs. Sure, in a loving relationship, we have those three must-haves of a healthy adult relationship, the ones that I spoke about in depth in episode 115. We have to have equality, reciprocity, and mutuality. Here's news. I don't think it'll be news to you, but hijackals do not have a foundation nor are they willing to build a relationship foundation on equality, reciprocity, and mutuality. They're not. So the chances you have of creating a healthy adult relationship with a hijackal are zero to none. And that's a big realization because I know that you can be very hooked on hope that is going to change, that somehow they'll outgrow it. Somehow you'll do the magical thing that will cause them to finally straighten up and fly right and stop being so critical and judgmental and difficult. No, it's highly unlikely to happen. But all the time that you're with them, you are being depressed, repressed, suppressed. And that can lead you to emotional exhaustion. So we need a ways to lift ourselves from that because you'll never feel validated. You'll never feel valued. You won't be respected. All the things that it's human and healthy to expect in a relationship will be unavailable to you when you have a hijackal parent or partner or sibling or coworker or adult child. But with any hijackal, those things are unavailable to you. So you won't feel valued and you won't feel as though you're welcomed or worthwhile. And I did an episode on that being worthy, wanted, and welcome. Very important. Remember, wherever you like to get your podcast, you can put in Save Your Sanity and then do a, do a search on words like worthy, wanted, and welcome, and you'll find that. And if you want to find it on my website, you can also do that because you can simply go to um, saveyoursanitypodcast.com. Save Your Sanity Podcast. And if you'd like to uh, support the work at Save Your Sanity Podcast, which I greatly appreciate, you can go along to patreon.com slash save your sanity. Patreon.com slash save your sanity. And you can support it there, which is very welcome. So <clears throat> what do you have to do that is causing you to be so exhausted further? Well, you're running as fast as you can to support the hijackal. You know, I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. I'll cover this base. I will do everything I can so that finally you will see that I love you, that I care about you, that I'm in it to win it, that I'm willing to collaborate. I'm willing to compromise. And just at the moment you do that, they move the markers and they want things to be very different than they've said all along that they wanted them to be. And that's because hijackals never will allow you to be equal. So if you do exactly what they want, they'll promise they'll do things. But as soon as you do exactly what they want, that feels equal to them. So they want something different. And then they make you wrong and move the marker. Emotionally exhausting. Absolutely emotionally and, and exhausting. And so you're running as fast as you can and you're putting them first and you think that will satisfy things, but it doesn't. And when you put them first, you are always at least second, if not last. And then they tell you that what's wrong with you, that you should want to come first sometimes. Have you had that experience? Because hijackals love to make you wrong. They'll make you wrong for anything. And that is something that wears you down, tears you down, puts you down. And that will lead to emotional exhaustion and fatigue. And if you're trying to be a step or two ahead of them all the time, which you do, 
because you want to please, you want to save yourself from further emotional abuse, you can be wearing yourself out totally. So what are some symptoms of emotional exhaustion? Sometimes we don't let ourselves see that the symptoms been, can be coming from the relationship, that the emotional components of the relationship are causing physical symptoms. And we like to ascribe them to other things. So here's a little list of symptoms that I found on Healthline. Lack of motivation. Now think about these things within yourself. Do I generally feel a lack of motivation? Because no matter what I try, it's not good enough. Do I have trouble sleeping? You know, some extreme hijackals don't want you to sleep. So they will wake you up in the middle of the night and make a demand of you. Or come in when they know that you're sleeping and wake you up on purpose. Or they will upset you just before you go to bed so that you will be physically exhausted because of their emotional demands. So you will have trouble sleeping. Or how about you find yourself irritable all the time? Well, that's like a red cape to a hijackal bull, isn't it? When you are irritable. And you're trying not to be, you're trying not to be, but you are because every nerve ending you have is raw. That can be a symptom of emotional exhaustion. Or how about a feeling of hopelessness? Like nothing I do will ever please this person. Nothing will ever be good enough. Nothing will get them to realize the changes that would make this relationship better. Nothing will get them to admit what they've done. It's hopeless, and I feel helpless in the face of it. That can be emotionally exhausting. Or <clears throat> you start being absent-minded. You start losing the details. You're just so overworked, and your nervous system is so depleted that you start being absent-minded. And then you don't do things you said you would, or you don't do things in the same way you said you would. And the hijackal is all over you like a tent, right? And that sense of absent-mindedness can be a symptom of emotional exhaustion, emotional fatigue. And it's coming directly as a result of trying to stay in a relationship where a hijackal simply will not be pleased. Or how about apathy? You've given up. There's no point even trying. There's no way I can please this human. So why do I try anymore? I just do everything that they say. It doesn't matter. In fact, you can give up to such a degree that you don't mind if they physically hurt you. And if you've gotten to that stage, please, 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 let's talk. It's so important. If you'd like to talk to me directly, I do have a new client one-hour full session offer for only $97 at BeAClient.com. BeAClient.com. Let's figure this out before you fall flat. And if you've fallen flat already, let me help you begin to get up. You need help to do that. You truly do. Now, you may also find physical symptoms like headaches. You know, your head is just on overload all the time. Your, your nervous system is exhausted and exhausting. Or you may find a change in appetite. You start emotional eating, eating a lot. And I believe that it's really related to putting on some armor to keep that person away from you. Like if I just put on some extra pounds, somehow that'll be armor that'll keep them from hurting me so much or keep them away from me or at least keep them out of my bedroom. And that can happen. On the other hand, the opposite can happen, that you feel so helpless and hopeless that you don't eat at all. And then you have nothing to feed your brain. You have nothing to feed your body, obviously, but it's not going to allow you to think clearly. And so you're going to have more apathy. But changes in appetite can be a symptom of emotional fatigue. And also that nervousness, that cat on a hot tin roof that goes along with the hypervigilance. Are they coming? What do they want? What are they thinking? What's the look on their face? What's the tone of voice? Um, 
<clears throat> are they coming in this room? Are they going by? What does that mean? And your mind starts to race, trying to figure out how to be safe in this situation. Staying safe in a relationship with a hijackal is a full-time job, isn't it? And you may find yourself giving up after a while. You just succumb. You lose your will. Or you find yourself having difficulty concentrating. You can't follow through. You're doing something in your home and you get diverted and you're doing something else and you come back and realize you didn't finish what you started. You're being diverted here and there. You can't concentrate. You think you're listening, but you can't pick up all the pieces. These are signs of emotional exhaustion or you find yourself getting angry over a little tiny thing, sort of out of proportion anger, irrational anger, because you basically have underlying anger all the time when you're with a hijackal and you're trying to suppress it because anger isn't nice. So you try to suppress it perhaps and, it, and then it flares and you're, it's unexpected. And then you feel badly about it. And then you say things and then you have to somehow smooth it all over. But that emotional fatigue can present this irrational anger that flares up because you're just too tired to think it through. You're too tired to figure out the only right thing to do, which of course the hijackal will never let you find the right thing to do because anything that you choose is going to be wrong. So we've got to give that one up really early. Or you may just have this sense of doom and gloom and dread. Again, back to the hopelessness and helplessness. You know, I don't expect much of life, and I hope life doesn't expect much of me. I can barely take on the day. I don't know what to do with the children. I don't know anything about the finances. Oh, I think I'll just float to the bottom and sit there for a while. Because you just have that sense of nothing's going to be right and there's always going to be something coming down at me or something I need to be concerned about or afraid of. And that is exhausting. If you just think of yourself physically, it's exhausting to keep your shoulders up by your earlobes, which is where they go when we have tension. And if you try and keep them up there for the duration of this episode, you will find that you are totally exhausted. So please let them down. <laughs> but, you know, when the body is a metaphor, if you are living with that level of tension, similar to having your shoulders raised by your earlobes all the time, you can be living in that level of tension in a relationship with a hijackal, and there comes the emotional exhaustion again. And the last thing that may be a symptom that you are emotionally fatigued is depression. I Again, back to the helplessness and hopelessness, but from a different point of view, I don't think there's anything I can do. Everything I've tried hasn't worked out. Nothing has made a difference. It's depressing. I'm going to depress my expectations of life. I'm going to depress and repress my needs. I'm going to suppress my voice. And that will lead to depression. So all of these things can be coming from the emotional exhaustion of living with or being in relationship with a hijackal. And that could be a parent or partner, sibling, adult, child, somebody at work. But it will cause these things in different levels. And it's important to think about it. And then we want to move on and think about, okay, what do we do about this? Because that's the important thing. How do I overcome the overwhelm of being with a hijackal? You want to have some skills. You want to know there's something you can do, right? And there is. There are lots of things you can do. And just start with baby steps. Don't take some huge action that would be more depleting. Just tiny things. So the first and foremost is hearing what I've said tonight and recognizing that emotional fatigue for what it is. Be able to say, I am emotionally exhausted. To just be able to sit and say it's true. I am. And then there may be a little voice comes across and says, well, you shouldn't be. You know, there's nothing terrible in your life. Send that voice away. 
listen to the voice within yourself, of yourself, that says, I am exhausted. I don't know how to get up again. I've fallen and I can't get up. And I recognize what's causing it. All the things that I've mentioned so far in this episode is causing these feelings of exhaustion that lead to feelings of depression and hopelessness and powerlessness. So the first thing is to educate yourself on these. Now, I've done lots of podcasts and videos on these things. So you can listen at SaveYourSanityPodcast.com or wherever you like to listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, wherever. Or you can go to my YouTube channel for relationship help. So youtube.com slash for relationship help. There's about 700 videos over there. So search for what you need and use that. So first of all, recognize that it's happening. And then ask yourself about your physical symptoms. What's really going on in my body? What's my body endeavoring to tell me? Where is it complaining? Where do I have pain? Where do I have aches? Where do I have chronic things that show up? What happens? Do I get colds easily? Do I feel agitated often? Do I feel like I don't have control of my emotions? What is going on in the body? And then as you do that, ask yourself, could these symptoms, these physical symptoms, these feelings that are going on in my body, bodily sensations, uh, maybe signs of dis-ease, could they be caused from emotional issues? Could they be coming from this feeling of not being able to be in control of your own life because someone else wants to control it? And you can often trace these back to when you get ill or when you feel certain ways or where pain comes from. And you can trace it back to the emotional impacts that have happened along the way. So if, to overcome this, we need to find out that it's there, believe that it's there, and then see how it's manifesting in our bodies. And then we need to learn to listen to the body now, there's a wonderful book called When the Body Says No by Dr. Gabor Mate in Canada. And the body is speaking to you all the time. But after we get parietal and prefrontal lobe development in our brain, somewhere between five and seven years old, it kicks in, we start thinking. And one of the things that we do when we start thinking and we've been around hijackals is we start to overthinking. <laughs> And so we will go down deep rabbit holes, try to figure things out or give up. So the first thing is to learn. Learn about yourself. Learn about what you're feeling. Learn about the subject. Learn about how to validate what you're observing. So many times, you know, we're celebrating this week because last Friday, the Save Your Sanity podcast system reached over a million downloads that tells me that there are a lot of people who are going through what you're going through and what i went through when i was much younger they need insights and information so there's a way to learn that's why i do the podcast and the youtube videos it's also why i have the membership site so that if you want to work with me but you're not ready to work one-on-one, -on -one, you can come on over there. And you can go to joinintoday.com and join the membership site or go to join in today and learn all about the membership site. Over there, there are three opportunities a month to be part of a group call with me and ask your questions. That may be just right for you. So learning, inform yourself. Realize you didn't cause it. It happened to you. Now, how would you like to feel? What direction would you like to go in? And even if you can only raise your head a little bit from being so suppressed, raise your head and say, there's a place I'd like to go. I would like to be anxiety free. I would like to be validated for doing something right. 
mm, that would give me some energy. I wouldn't feel so depleted. So start listening and learning. Start educating yourself. Start being with like-minded people. That's why the Emerging Empowered Community exists. And then start calibrating your responses and recalibrating your responses. If you have found that you usually, your self-talk says, I can't do anything about it. I really can't. You know, perhaps the hijackal controls all the finances. There's nothing I can do. Oh, yes, there is. Yes, there is. And I talk about that in some episodes. Always know there is a way. It may be slow. But there is a way. So start to recalibrate your responses to the suppression and say, maybe I need to look again for a way to get into an equitable relationship because I can't turn this one into an equitable relationship. But am I thinking I'm worth having a healthy relationship? Start there. Start to say yes. I deserve to be in a healthy relationship. I deserve to be with someone who appreciates me, who knows me, who hears me, who listens to me, who acknowledges me, who accepts me, who appreciates me. That's what healthy humans do. They get into healthy human relationships. But hijackal humans don't get into healthy relationships because they're too balanced and they can't stand that. They have to be the one in charge. Once you realize your relationship is out of balance, you can then raise that eyebrow and say, is that okay with me? And if I knew a way, would I do it so that I could get away from this and get help? Definitely get help. Connect with people who understand. You know, if when you go to joinintoday.com, look at the membership, know that the people there know what you're going through. They know what you have gone through. Walk with them together. Talk with people who know what you're talking about, what you're feeling, what you've experienced. And get good help. If you can work with someone like me, great. If you can be part of the membership and get that kind of help, great. If you have a good friend who will at least listen if they are wise enough not to give you too much advice, that can be a good start. Key to all this is starting to see yourself as having options. When you have been so depressed, suppressed, repressed in a relationship, beaten down, worn down, torn down, you may have given up and started to think you don't have options, but you do. They may be difficult, they may be slow, it may take a while, it may be work. I can guarantee you it'll be work, but you're worth it. You are totally worth it, and so are your children. If you're in a relationship where someone has made you feel these ways, don't allow that to happen to your children. Pull yourself up ever so slowly if necessary and say, no, we deserve more than this. It has to get better than this. This is not okay on any level. It is simply not okay. And as you do that, you get a little hope. You get a little energy. You get a little lift. And, oh, that's possible. Let me add one thing to it. Ah, oh, you know, I learned something else. I learned I'm not alone. I listened to something and went, how did that person know that's exactly what's happened to me? And I thought I was alone and this was only happening in my relationship. No, it isn't. It's happening to many, many people all over the world. This podcast is heard in over 100 countries. There's everyone who's going through what you're going through. So know that you're not alone. Know that there are ways to overcome this overwhelm that you can, in fact, no matter how small you start, you can lift yourself up from this emotional exhaustion and fatigue and find new life, new hope, and new energy. And I'm here for you. So if I can help, come on over. You can see all that's available for you at emergingempowered.com. 
You can even reach the membership there. You can reach the free um, checklists. Am I in a toxic relationship? Is my partner passive aggressive? They're all there for you, free. Go and have a look at Emerging Empowered. So until we speak again, take very, very good care of yourself because you're precious and you matter. Talk soon. Good evening, everybody. So good to see you all here. I'm so sorry I had to miss last week, but my voice was very unreliable. I don't know if it was because I got my second booster or whatever, but I just kept wanting to lose my voice or cough, and that would not have made much of a good podcast. <laughs> so I took the evening off. Hello, John. Hello, Anthony. You are welcome. Thanks for posting. Haven't seen you here before posting. Um, John asks, are they the same way in their new relationship? Well, not for a hot minute, John, but you know that the veneer will burn off quite soon and they will be just that way in their next relationship. You know, in the beginning, of course, they seem all sweetness and light and they've learned everything you ever wanted them to learn in the relationship with you, but um, it soon burns off. They cannot keep up the veneer very long. And so, yes, they will behave the same way in their new relationships. John said, they accuse me of being too needy and need to be validated. Well, that's projection. They're the ones that are needy and need to be validating. And it is exhausting. Hello, Stanley. Thanks for missing me. I missed you too. You're thinking of making an appointment. Good, well, do. Go to beaclient.com and do that. Let's talk. Okay. Oh, John says the hijackles friends reminded him he was not good enough for them. Oh, how lovely. The flying monkeys were flying over. <laughs> okay, let's see you know what happened here. For some reason the <clears throat> moving through things sometimes doesn't work here. Um There we go. John says, being irritable is so depressing. It is because you feel out of control. And it does leave you feeling hopeless and helpless. Um, <clears throat> and the reason that I did tonight's broadcast is, let's just be honest with ourselves. When we're emotionally fatigued or emotionally exhausted, it's not something we did to ourselves. It came from our environment and from our relationship if we're with a hijackal. So we have some choice. As I said, it may not be fast, it may not be the speediest way out, but there are always steps. So important. John said, I lost my confidence. Yeah, that's what they want you to do, John. <laughs> they always want you to lose your confidence. Hi, Annie, nice to see you here. John says, is there such a thing as emotional shock? Uh, yes, I think there certainly is. Um, I don't know what book you're referring to, Annie. Um, but yes, there are. there is something, uh, emotional shock. We get them all the time. Just when you think couldn't get, they couldn't be more degrading, a hijackal will say something that takes you lower. That will give you emotional shock. You will go into cognitive dissonance. Something just doesn't add up and you don't know what it is and your mind becomes befuddled. All those things can happen. Annie says she recommends The Sociopath Next Door. Yes, it's a very good book. It's good to read. Oh, thank you, Cosmic Cookie, for all those emojis. Um, Let's see what else is here. Why is this slowing down? Um, oh, yes, John, you're right. You can have emotional fatigue from growing up around it. And then you are at, it, you are at risk of it seeming so familiar that you accept it in the new relationship. And that is very, very tiring. Um, 
This is interesting. The, <laughs> the uh, comments keep repeating. So it's very strange getting to the new comments. Oh, Brandon, hi, says, is there any hope with a hijack call? Well, they're going to be the same as they always were, and they're going to get worse in all potential. So the hope is they'll get worse. If you have hope that they're going to get better, I would certainly question that. You know, I, I did an episode called um, Three Types of Narcissists. Uh, four, four kinds of narcissists and three degrees of narcissism. And that's my own stuff um, about the three degrees. I think there are some people who have a few hijackal behaviors at their worst moments. Usually those are people who were raised by hijackals. And when they are not using their, their current knowledge, they revert to behaving the way their parent behaved toward them. And they can definitely learn to understand that behavior and change. Then I talk about gray hat hijackals. These are the people who three or four times a year, they will have a nasty outburst and it will, it will last a long time. Definitely will color the relationship. And those are the people that are on the cusp. Usually I request that the couple come in and I see them both so that I can calibrate what, what can happen. And then there are the black hat hijackals who are only going to get worse and they're never going to change. So those are important to see. So you might want to go and look for that episode of four types of narcissism and three, um, three degrees of narcissism. And then you can read about that. Palagio says, can you learn to love yourself? Oh, you're speaking to John. Okay. Um, so Annie, this seems to have, they seem to have a little consciousness. Yes, they do. And they have a little conscience as well. The more severely hijackal a person is, the less likely they are to have any conscience. Now, people who are passive aggressive and narcissistic only, generally, they do have some consciousness they do have some conscious they know they hurt you they feel a little badly but they still want to win so they justify doing that but people who have uh, other traits that are beyond passive aggressive and narcissistic they they really don't care they really don't care about you they really don't care how you feel they just care that they get what they want and sometimes all they want is to make you feel terrible so that's very important John says, do hijackals get along with hijackals? Uh, well, they do and they don't. Um, hijackals can be attracted to other hijackals so they can collude together. They can figure out how to win over the world together. But there's always a problem with that because underlying competitiveness is key to hijackals. So they both may be thinking we're taking over the world and aren't we wonderful, but there's always an underlying script of how can I get ahead of you? So hijack will be attracted to each other, but be very, very volatile, very volatile and very destructive. So yes, it does seem, to, it does happen. Absolutely does. Now, again, we're having all kinds of fun with the, with the comments here. They're not showing up properly. Or maybe that's all the comments that there are. Yes, it seems to be. Now, you know my, my um, way of checking when it's time for me to go away on Monday night is when nobody has put up a comment or a question for, for 30 seconds. And then I just know that you're full up or you don't have any further questions and I disappear and we seem to be at that place. So I hope it has been worthwhile for you to think about emotional exhaustion and emotional fatigue and be able to see some light at the end of the tunnel so that you know exactly what you can do about it or what you can begin to do about it or even how to think about it. And I invite you, of course, to work with me if you haven't. That one-time new client offer for $97 at beaclient.com. Come on over and join me at the Emerging Empowered Community. 
simple to remember, go to jointintoday.com. And if you want to get my newsletter and you're not getting it yet, go to hijackalhelp.com and sign up. That way you'll get a synopsis of everything that I've done every week. And if you missed anything, you'll learn about it. And if you need to learn about anything upcoming, you'll learn that too. So good to see you. I'm glad to be back with you. And I will look forward to seeing you next Monday. Be sure you've subscribed or like the page that you're on so that you will get the notice. In the meantime, take very good care of yourself because you are precious and you matter. Good night.